In this demo, we'll demonstrate how to use the Web Services API to log automated test runs. This will be convenient for those of you that have different test harnesses that you'd like to be able to present the run results inside of QA Complete. Once you have set that up, what you'll get is in the test cases area, you'll be able to see all of your runs from here. You'll also be able to go to the dashboard and trend those runs out over time, which can be really convenient especially if you're trying to view your runs by machine. It allows you to do that. So how do we get all of this, these pieces to work? Well, the first thing uh, that you'll want to do to get familiar with the API is to go out to our website, go out to smartbear.com slash support slash download slash ALM complete. Once you're there, scroll to the bottom of the page. You're going to see these utilities and samples, and we have a testing fee, uh, we have a testing software that allows you to test the API. So you just click on that and go ahead and download that locally. Once you do that, that will download a zip file that will contain all of the files that you'll need. The executable for this API is in that zip file in the build directory, you'll see testwebservice.exe. So I just simply take those and then copy those to a directory on your hard drive. So in this case, I actually copied them over into a directory called test web service. To actually open up the testing of the web service executable, you just press that and that will bring the application up. To test the web service, you'll need to enter in your authentication information. If you're using our software as a service, you, it, this will be AGSP. If you're using our enterprise edition, it'll probably be AGSP ENT. The next thing you'll need is the department ID within the ALM Complete or QA Complete Edition. So how you can find that is simply go over to ALM Complete or QA Complete, click on Setup, click on Projects, Open and Create. You'll see the department ID here as well as the project ID. So you can even uh, go into that and actually copy those values if you wish. So I'm going to take my department ID here and copy that. I'll come back over here and paste that right in. I'll do the same thing with the project ID. The next thing you'll need to do is to have the user ID and password of the person that's going to be utilizing this. So what we recommend is that you go into the setup area if you haven't done it already and create a user that has full rights to the software. So we created this user called uh, run tester or test runner and you'll see that we have an ID associated with that particular user account. So I can come here and copy out that user ID, come over into here and paste that in. I also set up a password for that particular user so I'll type in their password here. Once you press test it, notice on the bottom of the page it has a little message area and it says that that information is valid. So we've we're logged in and we have a good authentication to the web service. So there's, as we mentioned in the software, so as we mentioned in the user's guide, the main areas that you're going to be working with with the automation bridge are going to be the automation hosts, the automation test items, and the automation runs. So we need to add those records into here. And we can do that from this automation bridge tab. Now before we get started, we'll go in here into the test cases area and we will click on the automation runs and what we'll see is that we don't have any runs for uh, maybe the machine that we're going to run on today. So let's imagine that we wanted to add a host to be able to run these on and let's imagine that the name of that host is going to be our virtual machine. Uh, so let's imagine our goal is to be able to have a virtual machine called VM Perl where we're going to run some Perl scripts and we're going to have those automated runs logged inside of here and maybe we're going to do a full regression we'll create a set of test cases for full regression and each time we run those we want those to be posted into here so the first thing we need to do is we need to create that virtual machine automation host called VM Perl to do that we come into here and click on the automation host area and then we give it a name. So we're going to call this VM Perl. We don't really have to put a description here, but if you'd like to, you can. But you do need your create user ID and your update user ID, which again is going to be from the authentication area. So I can come here and just copy this. 
So I'll come over here and then paste that right in. If I want to add that host, I simply press on the Add button. Notice once it does that, it brings back this automation host of 177, and it gives us a little message down here saying that the operation was successful. Now that we have the automation host ID, we now want to create an automation test item. And an automation test item is nothing more than a set of tests that you want to run. If you're being very granular, that may be a series of full regression tests, for example. If you're wanting to be really granular, if you're looking at things from a group of test cases, you might create an automation test item for a full regression that would allow you to do a full regression test and report the results of that. If you're being really granular, this might be an individual test case, so it depends on what you're trying to accomplish there. All right, now to enter in a automation test item, we first need that host ID, which we'll paste in from that prior screen. You also have to give it a valid host name, so that this will be the VM Pearl for us. Next thing you'll want to do Next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to give it a test name. So let's say that we're going to call this full regression. And then you'll want to give it a test type. So this is going to be maybe a Perl script. You don't really have to put a path in here, but if you wanted to put a path to your Perl script, you can certainly do that. Uh, the automation test parent ID, you can't leave that null. You need to put a zero there. The parent file path is not really required and the description is not required. The automation type is, we'll call this Perl. The next thing you want to do is you want to copy in that project ID. So again, I'll come back over to my authentication, I'll copy that, I'll come back over here and then I'll just paste that right in. Next you'll want to put in the user ID that's going to be creating this. So again, I'll come back over here, copy in my user ID, go back over to automation bridge, paste that in. Then I'm going to press add and then that's going to add this full regression test so that we can then use that to report our runs. As you'll notice it gave us a message here saying that the operation was successful and it also gave us an automation test ID 3874. The very last thing that we need to do is we need to create the automation test run. So we'll come over here and we will paste that right in. We'll also need the automation host ID, so we can come back over and get that. We also need to give the automation host name. And then we need to give it the whether this sets of tests passed or failed. So let's say that we had 100 test cases in here and 95 passed and, and 5 failed. So the end status would be failed. Then we can give the full test name. We'll give it full regression. Number of tests, as we mentioned, were 100. The number of passed were 95. The number of failed that were 5. Let's say that it took 10 seconds to run. Now, the file ID is if you wanted to attach a file, like a log report or something like that, you can actually use one of our other methods to upload your file. But in this case, since I'm not going to do that, we do have to at least provide a zero in there, meaning that there's not a file attachment. Then the last thing we need to do is put in the user ID. So I'll, again, I'll come back over here and I'll copy in my user ID from here. And I'll put that in the create user ID as well as the update user ID. Then the final thing we'll need is the automation type. We'll call this Perl again, and that's really all we need. We don't have to put in the child full path or the parent full path. Now before I actually run this, I'm going to go over to here to our automation runs, and I'm going to look at everything that's run today. We've had five things run uh, on various virtual machines, but we don't see the VM Perl there yet. Now if I come over here and I press add, which is then going to invoke the web services API to actually add that test run, as soon as that's completed, I should be able to view that information. So this just says that it created that automation run ID and it gave me a success message down there. So now if I come back over here to automation runs, you'll see that our Perl one is here. It shows that we ran 100 test cases, 
95 failed, 95 passed, and it was the full regression. The double benefit here is I can also go over into my dashboard and I can see that run activity over on the dashboard as well. So if I wanted to drill into VM Pearl, so if I wanted to drill into VM Pearl, I can do that and see all of those runs. If I wanted to aggregate all of my runs across all of my hosts, I can also do that as well. So as you can see, you can use these web services APIs to very easily hook up uh, your run statistics from your automated, your custom automated tools. So as you can see, you can very easily set this up so that you can report on all of your automated testing runs from third-party tools that we don't have a connector for. And you can come in and view those runs directly from within ALM Complete or QA Complete, and you can see those on the dashboard as well. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you.